2, verses 1 through 20, from the New Living Translation. You can follow along on the screen above me as I read this evening's word to you. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for that baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were angels staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by the sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the babe lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. The verse or verses I want you to kind of hold in your mind are these. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. If I were to give my sermon a title, and I don't usually do that, I would call it a Linus kind of Christmas. Back in 1965, or thereabouts, Charles Schultz was approached by the producers from CBS with the idea of creating an animated Christmas special featuring, featuring the Peanuts gang. Mr. Schultz, the creator of the Peanuts comic strip, was a devout Christian, and he agreed with one caveat. He would only do it if they would let him include the story of the birth of Jesus. The production has, uh, executives were hesitant about doing this because Peanuts was really, really popular and they were afraid that including scripture would make it boring and people would turn it off and wouldn't tune in. But eventually they conceded and agreed to allow Mr. Schultz to include it in the show. But that didn't mean they didn't continue to try and dissuade him. They did. But Mr. Schultz refused to budge. He reportedly said at one point, when they asked him, why are you being so stubborn and so obstinate? He said, if I don't do this, who will? Since that time, if you think about it, through the years, almost 50 of them, I would think, there are very few movies that families have wanted to sit down together and take the time to watch, more than a Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, maybe I'll finish, uh, Elf. 
that is a popular one. But just to show them one out, and for the past 50 or more years, millions of families and scores of children have watched a Charlie Brown Christmas. And they have heard the story of Jesus and what Christmas is all about. I know this might be a little bit unusual, but then I verge on the point of unusual. And with Matt's help, I would like to share with you now a short, but very perfect clip from a Charlie Brown Christmas. So now, if you're ready and you would turn down the lights. God's peace and strength, 
when we're worried or anxious, we find many, many more fear not men in Scripture. In fact, when it's thought of like this in the bigger picture, to fear God and no one else, and to fear not, we could say that, yeah, for sure. There are 365 fear nots in the Bible. More than enough to have one for every day that we draw breath. What an encouragement this is, since we all have fears. Maybe you are afraid to come out tonight because of the cold and the wind. Maybe you are afraid of what people think of you. I think that's Charlie Brown's major issue. People laughed at him and scorned him always. It was always a fear. Maybe you fear not having enough money or of public speaking. Maybe you're afraid of flies or being far from home. Or could there be anybody in our congregation that's afraid of spiders? <laughs> For sure. Maybe you feel failure or rejection or maybe the loss of a loved one, or disease, or surgery, or pain, or death. All of these are part of life and they're common fears. We all long to fear not, to be free to love, and to be loved. We all long for more of God's peace in the midst of stress and danger and uncertainty. As we celebrate the Savior's birth tonight, we celebrate the fact that the birth of Jesus separates us from our fears. The birth of Jesus frees us from the habits that so often plague us, that we are so often unable or unwilling to break ourselves from. The birth of Jesus allows us to simply drop our own security blankets that we have been hanging on to so tightly for so very long. And then once we drop them, we are to learn to trust and cling to God instead. Just like Linus, we may stand tall in the moment of faith and conviction, conviction in the moment when the scripture hidden in our heart comes to life. And just like Linus, maybe out of habit, then we actually reach down and pick that thing right back up because that's what Linus did. The other thing I want you to notice is he dropped the blanket, but then he picked it right back up when he went to talk to Charlie Brown. Our faith can be so powerful at times and so very delicate at other times. As we listen to Linus, it is clear that he knows the truth and he is bold to proclaim it with every fiber of his being. And we all listened with rapt attention. This room was quiet. We are not so very different from Linus, are we? On any given day, we too can be bold and powerful in our faith. But then we gaze into the mirror one morning to find that that old tattered blanket is once again draped around our shoulders. And we realize that we have become so used to it being there that we hardly notice that it's not back. But thank goodness that is not where this blanket story ends. The show, the peanut show, the Christmas show, ends with the peanuts game, not just singing, but clearly and unquestionably singing in worship. You would have thought maybe they would have been singing the tune of Oh Christmas Tree because of that's the focus, you know, that ugly little tree. But somewhere in the dropping of the blanket, in the picking it back up, the focus has changed. The focus has become bigger than the tree. Now the focus is Jesus. Now they are singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King. But you know what? Before any of this happens, Linus once again parts with that blanket for the second time. And that's going to share that with us right now, too. to me. 
just as Linus lays down his security blanket for the good, for good at the base of what will become a beautiful Christmas tree, you and I should strive to not just lay our blanket down anywhere, but to leave it forever behind us at the foot of that under tree, the foot of the cross, for our own good and the good of others. Last night I got a message from Vicki, and um, it was this son. And I think that that's real important to us to know. For unto us a son is born, forgiven. That baby Jesus came to a bunch of blockheads like you and I to forgive us one and all. And I hope that you'll remember that this Christmas. You know, the crowd, the Peanuts crowd stood around as um, Linus gave his speech. And then when Charlie Brown walked out and Linus followed him, they stood there in quiet solitude. And they noticed. They could see it. And so I hope tonight that you see it. That you see the message that all of our stuff, all of our junk needs to be laid down and never picked up again. And it can be because Jesus Christ came to us and as God in the form of a baby. And indeed, we are forgiven. Let us pray. Father, in the midst of all the fear and insecurity of these certain or uncertain times, may the scriptures and something as simple as this poignant cartoon live on inside of each of and every one of us as an inspiration for us all to seek true peace and true security, not in the stuff of this world, but in the one place that it has always and can always still be found. In a small baby, born in a manger, for unto us a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. Amen.